Hi, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we're very excited to be here. So first of all, some context to this project because I'm definitely not a blockchain evangelist. I'm kind of the opposite. So people were like, why are you talking about that? So in the fall of 2018, uh, like was mentioned, both of us are students at Rowan College of Burlington County. And in the fall of 2018, Lockheed Martin started, uh, was sponsoring our cybersecurity undergraduate research project. And the prompt to that group was take two nascent technologies, specifically blockchain and uh, Adena tools, which is automated detection of anomalous network activity. So take these two tools and tell us about them. If you find a way to combine them, great. Now, Jeff and I had not yet been part of this research project. We heard about it, okay, that's cool. The next semester, spring 2019, we said we really want to join this project. Now, alongside with us were Rebecca DeJoseph, Christopher Hendricks, Christopher Hurley, Jordan Giosi, Dalton Gravit, and Hannah Marthler. So we are only one fourth of an amazing team of people who are back home. Now, when we joined the project, it was great this project uh, the plan exists and now is the execution. So uh, for, for anyone who, who may, you know, roll their eyes at blockchain, I do that too. Um, anyway, uh, this, this turned into our research project for the semester titled Validating Data Integrity with Hyperledger Fabric. And it was, like I mentioned, sponsored by Lockheed Martin and advised by Professor Paul Warner. Uh, these, are the member, these are some of the members of our group. Uh, from left to right, we have Christopher Hendricks, myself, Jordan Giosi, Hannah Marthler, and Jeff. Not pictured are Rebecca DeJoseph, Christopher Hurley, and Dalton Gravit. So one of the technologies on which this is based are smart contracts. That's all nice, but what does that actually mean? They, it is a self-executing and managing con uh, contract that is built upon a blockchain infrastructure. Basically what that means is you have the integrity that comes along with blockchain where you can't edit former blocks because everything is based on each other and there's the visibility. However, unlike um, cryptocurrency, there's no mining involved. So you don't need to, uh, you don't need to complete ever complex mathematical processes just to create another block. Now, smart contract is just a type of blockchain. It is not, uh, it, it, it is just the format itself. And what we ended up using was Hyperledger, which is a project of the Linux Foundation. It's what's called a permission distributed ledger framework. The permissioned means that not just anyone can take part in it or can view it, but that you need permission that's given by business network cards. So those need to be actively granted by whoever is attempting to connect or interact within that network. Uh, because it is created by the Linux Foundation and also backed by IBM, it's completely open source and enterprise grade. And underneath Hyperledger, there are actually sub-projects and frameworks. So there's Hyperledger Fabric, which is a framework, Composer, which is a tool for Fabric, and Aroha, which is another framework. The second tool, which was the basis of this experiment, were Adena tools, the automated detection of anomalous network activity. And what the data tools do is they take in logs that get created across the network by systems, by machines, and it takes them and establishes a baseline. Now, when it gets any logs that say, mm, this, this doesn't fit with what we're used to, it raises an alert, this is anomalous behavior. Not only does it raise that alert, but it actually tries to investigate, is this malicious anomalous behavior or is it anomalous behavior for some legitimate or benign reason? And at that point, it's able to, uh, to, to tell you know, the owner of the machine, hey, you may want to check this out. Syslog NG is great for collecting logs. It is able to collect logs from any system, as well as Docker, which is what we were using. It's application level virtualization that we were using on all of our machines. And even better than that, Splunk, which is a well-known Adena tool that's used uh, for security monitoring software, was in alpha testing for a new feature that integrated Hyperledger Fabric logs. One of our team members reached out to the team at Splunk in charge of that and said, hey, we're students, can we test this out for you? 
And they were wonderful, gave us access to that, and it is now uh, full public mode. So it was really nice getting to have alpha testing for that and giving them feedback on it. So based off of those two things, the first thing that comes to mind is what the project goal was. So the project goal was to build a secure messaging network based off of those smart contracts. And the smart contracts are pretty much the intercommunication between the computers. And then all of that is fed to the Dana tool, looking at the network to go about seeing for any anonymous uh, traffic. Uh, just to give a little bit of explanation about this picture here, uh, the original idea was to have four computer nodes that all communicated on the Hyperledger server, which was the one that was hosting the actual um, the smart contract software. Uh, on top of that, it was also hosting a Syslog NG client, as long uh, also with all four of the nodes. All that information would be fed into the Syslog NG server, which the logs would be collected and then fed to the Splunk server, also known as the Adena tool. Uh, on top of that, we wanted to see if this would actually work as far as demonstrating its security abilities. So we created Eve over here, the bad guy, who's pretty much going to be attempting to eavesdrop on message traffic and see if, what he can go about getting. So with all of that, there was a set of challenges, especially since we are college students. Um, some of those being that we were using uh, decommissioned college computers at a community college. Um, we were constrained to a 13 time week period based off the semester. We're also all college students who are working part-time jobs at the same time. Um, and the other parts were we had no clear path for this project as far as like people have worked on this before us. Um, so it was kind of uh, trial by fire for a lot of us on both blockchain and the other varied tools that we used. Um, and as far as those challenges, we learned a lot throughout the journey. Uh, some of those things was uh, attempting to use Raspberry Pis as the nodes instead of computers themselves, seeing if we can add some um, IoT or other devices into the network and see if it worked. Uh, we quickly found out that the system architecture for most of your Pis, your, especially your Pi 0Ws, uh, did, was not compatible with Docker. So we quickly found out and had to switch off back to using the decommissioned PCs. Um, Additionally, uh, like I mentioned before, there are a lot of frameworks for blockchain and smart contracts, so we played around with those for a while before we settled on the right one. Um, first, uh, we tried writing a blockchain from scratch in C++ based on a tutorial online from Dave Nash. Tutorial was great, highly do not recommend doing that if you only have 13 weeks. Um, yeah, maybe if we had more time. We also tried using Hyperledger Aroha, which, like I said, is also one of the frameworks created by the Linux project. It was wonderful. However, Aroha and Fabric both have different uses and focuses. And for our purposes, we found that Hyperledger Fabric was a little bit better for our shorter time period. Also, we tried to grant each node explicit permission. So, you know, only node one could send a certain type of message to node two, and node three couldn't send messages. However, like I said, uh, like, like we said, there is, we didn't really have much experience prior to this. Uh, so we, we didn't have the time nor a lot of the knowledge to take advantage of a lot of the advanced features uh, in, in the framework. Now, Following on, on the challenges and some of the things we tried, this is the reality that our project ended up being. So we have a total of six machines, um, two servers that you have, oh, two servers that you have up here and here. So our top server here is our hyper, uh, it hosts the Hyperledger itself. And underneath the Hyperledger, we have the Composer Playground tool. Now, based on that, we have the REST API, which lets web services interface with the blockchain. An Angular, applica an Angular application created using Yeoman runs against the API and allows users to easily use and interact within the Hyperledger network from a web platform. So it allowed us to get around the need to distribute uh, business network cards to give those permissions out. Um, now, from there, we had four nodes, uh, all machines running Ubuntu, um, and those nodes each were also running Docker, that is the uh, 
application level virtualization. And they were each able to communicate with the hyperledger and run transactions. Simultaneously, we had all of them uh, we had all of their logs sent over to the secondary server, which was collected by syslogng. Now, using a universal forwarder on port 1050, we're able to send them back to the original Hyperledger Fabric server, which was also hosting Splunk. Now that we had the logs from the machines being fed back to Splunk, as well as Splunk monitoring Hyperledger Fabric, Splunk was able to detect any anomalous behavior. So even if something did go wrong, it was something we were able to detect. Additionally, we had on node three, we had WSCAT running that allowed node three to act as a WebSocket client so it could subscribe to any transactions or exchanges that occurred within uh, the overall blockchain network. So we were able to add on top of that even another layer of human authorization. Uh, they could tell if anything was, was acting kind of funny. Uh, so, so this is what it really ended up being. So for as far as moving forward, we talk about the, uh, the future of this, uh, the applications, everything else that comes of it. And there's a few things that we definitely need to uh, add on to it for sure. Uh, one of those being that um, we needed to add the minor, minor modification of the Hyperledger fabric, which was recently deprecated in, uh, in late August. So a matter of rewriting the code for moving forward, um, which is perfectly fine. Uh, the other things that we would want to do is go about expanding the compatibility. Uh, I don't know if it, you, we mentioned it before, but most of the machines that we had running initially were using just plain old Ubuntu 16.4, I believe. Um, so we want to expand to Windows and some of the other mobile OSs to be allowed to be used in way greater uh, networks. Uh, some of the other things is the manual or the communication was all done manually. Um, using the WebSocket and the REST API, we'll be uh, adding the automation so that way this can happen seamlessly in the background uh, for whatever communication you want to be implemented and going about that, uh, refining the code to be used in the relevant industry that it would be used for. So being able to use it with whatever program, wherever the data is stored. Um, but yeah. So we're, you know, we're very thankful for uh, Hackaday and everyone having us. Uh, and like we said, we're, we're only a quarter of a wonderful group of people back at home. Um, we were definitely thankful for, for being part of that group and getting to build upon you know, a concept that they really developed and were really the driving force behind. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to find us. Uh, and thank you very much. <laughs>